two, one. All right, so let's go. So net forces. So once you're kind of in dynamics and you start to study forces, you know, you kind of were introduced to various forces. So, you know, force of frictions, you know, force of gravities that you have, you know, force maybe tension forces. Okay, you can have a normal force. Okay, so I mentioned those. I can put up a link up above there to that introduction. You know, you'll slightly uh, uh, kind of slowly shift over to the idea of doing free body diagrams, you know, kind of how these forces can be placed on an object, you know, so you can think about that. Okay, I'll put up a, a link to those free body diagrams up there as well. And then you're gonna have to start thinking before you start going into, um, you know, Newton's laws and trying to understand certain things about forces. Um, uh, one key component, which is the net force. So I want to be able to break this down and give you a few, at least simplistic examples to get yourself started um, because the assumption is you're kind of just beginning this. So what is this net force? Well, the word net really just means total, right? So um, when we do say net, okay, and then we say force, we mean, you know, the total force. Now, what does that mean? Well, there isn't really just one, you know, force that ever is kind of acting on a particular object. It is a set of forces. So all of those frictions and tensions and maybe applied forces and whatever else that might be happening. So you have a multiple forces and you want to be able to sum them up. Now, because forces are vectors, then they will have a certain direction. So for example, if you're looking at this very simplistic example, you know, where you have only two forces, we don't know what these forces are but you have an object, you know, it seems like a free body diagram. You have one force, which is kind of upwards and then one force, which is directly downwards. So they're in the same direction, right? One is opposite direction to the other, but they're in the same. So that's one dimensional. Okay. So it's very simple in, to do this because of the fact that we can say, okay, well, you know, if these are actual vectors, I can easily add and subtract these now. Okay. So let's say if, you know, this was, my force number one, and this was my force number two. And I will call them one or two if I don't know exactly, you know, what they are. And this is what we will do. So what we would say is that the net force or the total force that we would have, so it's still a vector, although sometimes we will drop that vector symbol. I mean, I do it um, mainly out of laziness, to be honest with you. Okay, because, you know, I kind of know that forces are vectors, but if I'm with students, you know, I'll try my best to always put that arrow up, but I'll remind them, please forgive me if I forget it. So, you know, in this case, we would really have just two forces. So we would have force number one plus force number two. So that is, you know, the total force. And because they're in one dimension, so basically they're in the same kind of um, line, in this case, or plane, then, you know, we can go ahead and add these. So, you know, if I make upwards, so up positive, you know, I can take their magnitudes, which would be 65, and then I can subtract the other one, which is 45. So it is in the opposite direction. Um, and I'm going to get 20, right? So this is going to be 20 Newtons that I have, and this will be up, right? So with regards to the actual direction. So overall, you know, if we would now take this, we can take this particular object and, you know, in terms of the net force, we knew, we know now that, you know, our actual force would basically be 20 Newtons, okay, in the up direction. That's the overall force. That's the one um, force, okay, that we think of, but it's not, a, it's not one in terms of one item. It's the summation of the two forces that we had. And that's the key thing to understand about net forces. So net forces are the idea that you're adding up all of the forces that are kind of placed on an object or an object is experiencing. And they're gonna be in different directions. It's not necessarily always gonna be in one dimension like you have it here. So in general, when we do define the net force, so when we write this out, we simply say that this is the addition, okay, or the summation of all the forces. So when you're just beginning and most of the time for students are introduced to physics and don't have a huge amount of background, so maybe grade nine or grade 10 um, mathematics, okay, um, then 
we, or at least myself, I would like to just kind of say that, okay, in a very simplistic way, okay, this is what the net force is. And because we don't always know how many of these forces might be present, so we typically will say a little n at the, at the end there, this is not the normal force, okay, that you have, but this is n in terms of, okay, just the whole number. So meaning, you know, one plus two, you know, plus three, plus four, etc., until we sum up all of the forces. So now, in this case, you know, as you can see here, well, we had only one plus two. So my n over here was two because that was the maximum number. So this n, okay, that I have, and that we use is typically designated for the last force, okay, that you're going to be adding them. Now, does the order of these matter? No, you know, so when you write one, two, three, so how you actually structure them, it doesn't really matter how you write them out, um, but do keep in mind that they are actual vectors. So, you know, they're not going to be necessarily in the same direction. And you might have to go in two dimensions and then maybe even three dimensions, although, you know, in standard kind of grade 11 or foundational physics, you typically will just deal with maximum probably two dimensions unless your teachers kind of want to push the envelope on you and put it into three dimensions. So now this nice statement that we have is actually the net force. So it's the addition of all of the forces that are present on an object um, that we're not going to obviously neglect, that we're going to be keeping it there. And the way that we like to write this um, in shorthand, so instead of writing okay, all of these and then you know putting the dot, dot, dot and so on, we use a summation symbol. And this might be the first time that you're introduced to the summation symbol. Um, so this summation symbol just means the addition. So instead of writing, you know, plus and plus and plus and so on, so we use this, so this is sigma, so it's a Greek symbol, and it means this summation of all of the forces. So to write the same thing as above, you know, we would write, I'm gonna put a little i in here, so I'm going to say that, you know, the little i, so it starts from 1, and it goes all the way up to n, and that is kind of the summation, okay, of all of the forces. So as you can see here, so this i starts from 1, so as you have it, okay, from 1, so if you would plug this back in, this would be force F1, so that would be this, okay, then this symbol just tells you that you're adding, so you're going to put in addition, right, then I becomes two, right, so this is right two, okay, and then I becomes three and four, you know, and five, and then we're just adding these up until eventually we get to N, and N is on top here, and it is the last item, okay, um, of that. So this is exactly the same thing as writing out this, right, so this, you, the one that I'm just highlighting at the moment, this one you're used to, and the one that with the sigma notation, you may just be introduced. It's just for convenience that we use that in sciences and math. We don't want to be writing plus and plus and plus, so we write sigma. And by the way, so very often, you know, this might just be written like this, okay, and then someone might just write that. And what they mean is, okay, you're adding up all of the forces on the actual object that are present, all right? So either or, okay, this is what you have. And if you start doing more and more mathematics, right, or more and more sciences, you're going to be running into this sigma quite a bit, okay, in terms of seeing it through. So I hope that makes sense. Now, in terms of your viewpoint of physics, not that you really need this sigma, because you're going to be dealing with, you know, simple things, and maybe they'll have four, maybe maximum five forces that are present in an object, and you might be asked to actually sum them up. Now, this does relate back, um, if you think back of displacement, right, in kinematics, and, you know, you wanted to find out what the total displacement was. So what you would do is, well, you had to add up all of your vectors, right, all of your displacements as a whole. And that, okay, is the same thing as you're doing here. Now, you're going to be adding up, not the displacements, which basically was related towards positions, right, and the distance is covered, here you're actually dealing with the forces, which are just pushes or pulls coming from various different items, from friction, from tension, from a direct applied force or something else. So that's what you would have here. So now finally, as I kind of end this video, because I don't want to make it too complicated, the goal is just so that you are familiar 
okay, if someone states the word Fnet, right, or the net force, you know what they're referring to, okay? So they're referring to the addition of all of the forces. That's what I would want you to think. So now if you have a diagram like this, you know, and someone presents this to you, so now you might scratch your head and you say, hmm, well, so you know, how would I write this or compute this out? Because this is clearly not just in one dimension. You know, I have things, you know, going to the right, to the left, up and down, you know, so they don't give us here any um, kind of directions per se, but we can see with the reference point, you know, we can assume right is positive, up is positive, and then left is negative and down is negative. But these are the forces that are applied. So what would happen to this particular object, right? So if you wanted to know what the net force here is, so you would simply state, so you were going to be writing this out, this would have been F net. And if you would label these, and this you can label arbitrarily, so this could be F1, you know, so this could possibly be F2, okay, that you have, this could be labeled as F3, because you don't know where these forces are coming from. So I'm just numerically labeling them out, one, two, you know, three and four, instead of, you know, force of friction or force of tension or applied force or something else. I'm just labeling them one through four. So if you would be doing this, this would be the summation, okay, of all of these. And that's what the net force would be, okay, in this situation. So you would have this. Now notice this, you know, take, took me a little few seconds to try to write. It would have been much easier for me just to say, you know, this is from one to four. So my N is four. And then I'm just adding up all of the different forces. And now you can have a visual of what we actually mean by the net force. Now, of course, we still have to compute it. It was pretty simple in this first case that I had. And now I have added to that first case, both to the left and to the right. So we kind of know what happens okay, in the up and down direction or in the Y direction, if you're thinking of coordinate systems, Y and X, this would have been your y direction, so we already know that. But now we have also an x direction, right? So just like you were doing, okay, with the um, division of vectors, okay, into or breaking them down into their x and y components, and then, you know, you had examples related to that, you know, how do you deal with them? And maybe I can put up a link up above there, and that was typically dealing with um, possibly displacements or maybe velocities. Now you're doing the same thing, except with um, forces. So in these forces, you do break them down into their X and Y components. Now here, we're kind of lucky because they're already in their X and Y components, right? So for instance, if you wanted to write this out, you can state that the net force is going to have two components. Now it's going to have a X component and a Y component, and you can certainly bring them together at the end to create your F net. So let's do that to, you know, to end this video. So we've already done the Y component, so I'm not going to recreate that. So my Y component, so that was right here. Okay, so this is what I had in the Y. Okay, so I'm going to just steal this away and actually I have to be careful because it's no longer F1 and F2. So maybe I'll do this. So I'm going to take this right there. Okay, and I'm going to paste it back in here and I'm going to style it orange. Okay, just so that it fits okay, with what we're doing. So this means that, you know, this is the net force, okay, in the y direction. So for example, this would have been nothing else but F net, okay, and it's in the y direction that I would have. Now it's still a vector, I guess, okay, so it's upwards. But now I also need to do the same thing for the x direction. So now in the x direction, if I would take it, so that's going to be dealing with F1 and F3 there. And I'm going to assume that, you know, to the right is positive. So just this is kind of like your X um, coordinate. So this would have been 35. And notice the other one, okay, is in the opposite direction. It's 15. So this one, okay, right here, oh, I guess it also gives us 20 Newtons, okay? But this would have been 20 Newtons. And this is to the right, okay? So that would have been that. And so for this, and okay, this becomes now, all of a sudden, what I have is, okay, so this little object, okay, I'm going to shift it over here. So if I would do this, you know, I would have the same kind of length, okay, except it's now to the right. So I have this particular force. So this is now 20 newtons, okay, to the right. And this is my component of F net in the X direction. 
right? So this is my x direction right there. So now I have my x and I have my y components. And depending, you know, you can possibly finish here. But if you want to combine these, um, well, this isn't very difficult to do. So this goes back. Okay, and to those examples of displacements and understanding how to bring these in. So what you have is, you know, you have your one piece right there, okay, and then you also have your other piece, okay, which is right here. So you have two, two of these pieces now all of a sudden, okay, that you have as you're going through. So your net force, okay, within here is nothing else, okay, but that. Now this one is rather simple because of the fact, okay, that you have 20 over here and 20 over here, right? So in between them, so you can certainly find out, okay, what the net force is. Now, most of the time you might just deal with the X and the Y components, especially in the beginning. Now, if this is 20 and, you know, so if you have 20 over here and you have 20 over here, so this basically of an isosceles triangle in here. So the angles over here, so the angle right here is gonna be 45 degrees because those sides are the same. And you can certainly find out by the Pythagorean theorem, okay, what that red or the resultant force is. And it looks like it would be kind of pushing the object, you know, to that, at that 45 degrees or maybe pulling the object in that direction. So, you know, for that, well, that's just Pythagorean theorem. So this is gonna be 20, Okay, squared, 20 squared, and then take the square root of that. And then we can obtain what the actual answer is. And, you know, I'll leave that with you. But this is the actual net force now. So your you know, net force, you would, have, you would have been able to say here, your net force is equal to, actually, I am going to compute it, although I should remember okay, what that is. Okay, but um, I don't, um, and that's all right. So plus, so 20 squared so let's put that in there so this is about 28 i'm going to round it to, to two significant figures in here um so within there and that's arbitrary by the way because it's not like i'm rounding to something special so you can just be careful and ask what your teachers want you to round to i'm going to keep this to two or to a whole number and you know what you would say is this would have been because it also has a direction right so you can state the direction and in here, this would have been at, you know, a 45 degree angle, okay, with respect to the horizontal. If this was east, west, north, and so on, then you can label it in terms of that as well. So that is your full F net. It had an X component and a Y component, and that's how you would try to deal with these, okay, on their own. So the goal of this video was to really just share to you, hopefully through examples and some understanding, um, you know, A, you've learned hopefully this new little sigma notation for summing up. So the net, which means total, okay, forces, so adding all forces together. Um, you do them by the directions. You typically will split them up into their X components and Y components. Um, if it's, you know, something like this, you can do that directly. It's very simple. If it's something like this, you know, then you can do it in the X and the Y and then bring them together if necessary um, right there. All right. So thanks for watching okay, and hopefully we'll see you in future videos. Bye, everybody.